As one of the United States most sought after health experts for reversing the condition of diabetes, Dr. Neil Bernard is renowned for his best selling book about a landmark program that stabilizes blood sugar levels without medication. Dr. Barnard is also the president and founder of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, a unique nonprofit organization that promotes preventative medicine and ethical research, such as by using alternatives to animal and human testing. These have been the two main objectives steadfastly pursued by the highly respected group since its founding in 1985 till today, with an impressive list of achievements along the way. PCRM is supported by some of the nation's most renowned healthcare professionals, with an illustrious advisory board, including the China Study author and nutritionist Dr. T. Colin Campbell and Dr. Caldwell Esselstein of the Cleveland Clinic. Conscientious celebrities, media personalities, and top athletes collaborate with PCRM on various projects. PCRM is doing amazing work in the world, and it's a blend of helping animals and making people aware of that there's no reason to have animals suffer anymore, to test them, and in addition to letting the world know that we don't need to eat animals anymore in order to nourish our bodies. Really just the, them getting this logical, simple message out to people um, is something that, that I like to support. The year before I went to medical school, I had a job in a hospital helping out at autopsies. And one day we had a person who died in the hospital of a massive heart attack. And we pulled the ribs off the front of the chest to examine the heart, which was filled with atherosclerosis. That's the, the blockages in the arteries. At the end of the exam, I put the ribs back in the chest and sewed up the skin. And I went up to the cafeteria, and they were serving ribs for lunch oh. that day. And I, I, could, I couldn't eat it, and it looked just like the body. And as time went on, I started to break away from my meat-eating past. And also, when I was in medical school, I saw animals being used in experiments that were not very kind. I started to be concerned about these things. I felt that in American medicine, we do a good job of diagnosing illness, and sometimes we do a good job of treating it, but we don't do very well when it comes to preventing illness. And I wanted to get involved there. I wanted doctors to be advocates. And happily, we've grown now, and we have many doctors uh, speaking with one voice. To lay the groundwork for what healthy eating means, PCRM conducts research studies on patients with common conditions such as obesity, diabetes, and high cholesterol, etc and offers to show them how to start a low-fat, vegan diet. And then we test the medical effects, and we present it to scientific conferences, and we present our results in medical journals as well. Unlike any other organization, the evidence for a plant-based diet is backed up with sound science. And I just love that, because we have scientists and doctors that are proving that it's not just compassionate, but it also is healthy. With a firm groundwork in research, PCRM presents engaging and versatile educational programs that have reached tens of thousands of people. Always a pioneer, in 1991, PCRM also created the new Four Food Groups, an innovative proposal for a national nutrition policy that is cholesterol-free and low in fat. The four food groups are fruits, legumes, whole grains, and vegetables. As PCRM explained, regular consumption of animal foods, even in lower quantities, possesses serious health risks. To me, it's a group that, uh, it's doctors telling you what to do. It's about being healthy, what is happening to our country, where, you know, one out of three children are obese, they have early heart disease. When you get physicians, who understand anatomy better than any of us do. And they come together and say, hang on a second, this isn't working. We have to listen. At the forefront of PCRM's vital work is the active role of Dr. Neil Barnard. He gave a recorded series of lectures for the PCRM Cancer Project. 
He has authored many practical books for patients and their families, including his most recent one titled 21 Day Weight Loss Kickstart, Boost Metabolism, Lower Cholesterol, and Dramatically Improve Your Health. At the outset of the deadly H1N1 swine flu pandemic, he was one of the few outspoken experts to raise awareness that the origin of the disease was concentrated pig farming. One of PCRM's creative ads was shown in Washington, D.C., where the group is based. Um, we also are very active in politics. So, for example, if there may be a law in Congress that would improve the healthful meals in schools, we work very hard for that kind of thing. And on the other hand, there are subsidies for unhealthy products, and we oppose those kinds of things. We've been very busy promoting alternatives to animal research. The PCRM Legislative Fund headed by its Director of Public Affairs and Vegan, Mrs. Elizabeth Kucinich, has succeeded in many campaigns working directly with U.S. legislators. During a recent fundraising event for the PCRM, Supreme Master Ching Hai, who had been invited by Mrs. Kucinich to attend, was unable to come and sent a representative, while also contributing a 50000 U.S. dollar donation for furthering the good work. I would like to say thank you so much for your generosity, your vision for working for animals, the environment, for humanity, and for supporting the PCRM Legislative Fund. We really thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I would just like to say thank you so much for really being an inspiration to so many people and for your support of the work that we're doing. It's a long road ahead, and I'm delighted that we're working together. We have a number of successes where medical schools are stopping using animals for teaching, trauma labs, same story. But we mustn't delude ourselves. People in America eat a million animals per hour today. Around the world, the, the figure is much higher than that. And animals are being abused in laboratories. And people themselves are paying a price. And their children are paying a price. Where one in three American children is overweight now, one in three is going to develop diabetes. One in two boys is going to develop cancer at some point in his life. One in three girls. These are terrible statistics. And the only way to start to tackle that is to help people to see what's on their plate and to understand that a simple change there can make a very profound change in their body and for their family. We're seeing dramatic changes. In 1991, Colin Campbell, uh, Dennis Burkett, who dis discovered really the health value of fiber in the diet, Oliver Alabaster, who was a cancer uh, researcher, and I held a press conference saying that meat and dairy products are not necessary in the diet. They're just options, and frankly, you're better off without them. A and what you really need are vegetables, fruits, grains, and, whole and, and, and beans. When we said that, it was considered scandalous. <laughs> well, I want to tell you that in 2007, the American Medical Association, the very same one that said this was dangerous, actually passed a resolution saying this is actually a good idea that children should be served non-dairy vegetarian meals, vegan meals in schools. So people can change. I think what will happen, at least what I hope will happen, is that we'll do a shift. We'll be doing what Hippocrates and all the other medical pioneers from centuries and centuries ago always said, is let food be your medicine. And we have to start there. If we look after ourselves and follow a really healthful diet, we'll have many doctors with time on their hands. And that's what I'm looking for.